بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد is it the people who change or the masks that fall off sibghat Allah either we are immersed in the color of Allah in his Rasul we are dyed with the color of Allah in his Rasul or not each person according to situation, place, time wears a mask, a front which is a mask of deception that results in deception around us and at the end this mask has its consequences if not in dunya then definitely in akhirah as it is said if words don't add up it is usually because the truth wasn't included in the equation. Words don't add up. It's usually because the truth wasn't included in the equation. So this mask of Doka deception lies. Beware of the truth. You may gotten hold of the wrong half. Beware of the truth. You may have gotten hold of the wrong half. So sometimes somebody gives you a story, it is not 100% true, not 100% false, but we don't take the trouble out to verify and to authenticate whether what is being said is genuine and we accept the mask which the person has portrayed in front of us. So different situations have different masks, a person when he goes on honeymoon, it's a mask. That's why that's the best time of his life. But when they come back, they remove that mask and the marriage disintegrates. Before marriage, people say we need to date. So each person, the couple, wear a mask. Stick to deen. Stick to what Allah and His Rasul have said. There's protection in it. So each person builds that whole nikah that marriage is built on a profile, on a foundation of deception. Another mask. Why? Because they dress the best for each other. They act the best for each other. They show the best for each other. But after marriage, it's the worst of each other. So when a person does familiarize themselves before marriage, then we accelerate the familiarity which breeds content. It breeds contempt. The hatred, the malice increases. And a person praises the other, whatever praises they got. So we've all exhausted. We've given the flowers, given the chocolates, we've written the poems. When marriage happens, it's the last means that's when the breakdown starts. So being pure, at-tayyibina li tayyibat You are pure, you will get pure, your results will be pure. Then a person gets used to different people. He dated A, they broke up. Dated B, broke up. Now his choice becomes refined in what he wants. And he becomes a individual who's seeking always better and more. Because a person who hasn't engaged is pure. So whatever they get, they'll be contented and they'll be happy and I think so this is the best. Whereas a person who's engaged with other people before marriage, then no matter what, who and why, she's not the best, he's not the best, he's not good enough. He's not like my ex. She's not like the first, she's not like number two. And eventually that marriage breaks down and a person reverts to their old relationships. Then worse than that, this is just acquaintance, worse than that is getting intimate. Though a person loses the ecstasy because the novelty is lost. So a person gets acquainted, accustomed, and his pleasure levels decrease because he's accustomed to it. 
So when he gets married, there's no climax. It's something that is normal. Actually, it's abnormal now because you're not like that. Oh, yeah, I didn't get the enjoyment. And through pornography, we've even decreased our pleasure. So through this mask, we start finding fault with everybody, the closest people around us. And we don't look at ourselves, that the flaw is in me. I am the instigator. I am the initiator. I am the problem. Like they say, there was a story of a king who ruled a country and he decided to go to a distant area in his country. When he returned back to his palace, he complained his feet were very painful. And since it was a journey which he had not undertaken, he had a lot of complaints. And the road was very rough, stony. So he made a royal decree. And he said that that place that he traveled, he wanted to line it up with leather. So how much cow skins, how much was the cost? So one of his advisors said, O oh, king, why do you have to spend that amount of money, that amount of resources, that amount of people? You don't even know if you live so long to see it complete. Why don't you just cut a small piece of leather and cover your feet? So the king was surprised and he agreed that a shoe should be made for himself. So if you want to make the world and change the world and make situations better for us, then Allah here, the heart, our heart, our focus, our attention should not be on everybody else, but rather my focus and attention should be to myself first. I need to change. The revolution in the world starts when we revolutionize ourselves. So eventually a person starts making the environment and the people around him according to his fancy. Do you expect everybody to react how you want them to react? You have not trained them, you have not been clear, you have not given them instructions. So we want everybody around us to be how we want it. We are not ready to be like how they want it. And even that is a flaw. Worse than that is a person comes to a level where he wants Dean to adapt according to him. Dean must morph, there must be a metamorphosis of Dean according to how I want it and how I think. So in my perception of Dean, in my opinion of Dean. So that's a very dangerous mask. Children in front of their parents have a mask which is a strict household or even it's not strict. They're waiting to get out, waiting to turn 18, waiting for their freedom. When's the opportunity? When's the chance? When I can I be free and do what I want to do? Likewise, people say that a student in Madrasa, mashallah, spent so many years in Madrasa. But let's go back. He was in normal school. A normal child decided to go to Madrasa. So he wasn't changed when he came. His Islam was not made on that level that it should have been made. He went in Jamaat, decided I want to become a scholar. Now he comes in Madrasa, the Zahiri Shakal, the outward appearance of Deen is there. But internally, there's no change, there's no reformation, there's no Islam. Deen becomes another subject, it's another university, it's another study. So spiritually he doesn't progress, externally it may seem like that, he's completed now, he's a scholar of deen. That's why Mona Ihsan Sab used to explain, he said a person has love of dunya before they come into the environment of deen. In that environment nothing is made, no effort is made to change that love of dunya and take it out of the hearts. So when he leaves, he's still got that love of dunya ingrained in the heart. And that's why when the challenge of dunya comes, then he fails. So we should not get caught up with these different forms of masks. Some people to make the environment believe they must, they lie, they deceive. You see there was a monkey who was a pet for a sailor and at sea the ship 
sink. So a dolphin came to save the monkey. And he jumped on the back of the dolphin. The dolphin reached an island and he asked the monkey, do you know this place? So the monkey replied, yes, I do. In fact, the king of the island is my best friend. And do you know that I am actually a prince? So the dolphin said, well, let me tell you something. There's nobody living on this island. And if you want to be a prince, forget that. Now you'll be king. So the monkey asked, how can I be king? He said, that's easy. You're the only creature on this island. You'll naturally become king. So sometimes this lies, this doka, this deception, these masks catch up with us and it takes its stall. And this mask of dunya, Abu Darda radiallahu anhu used to say, Min hawani dunya ala Allah, Allah yu'sa illa fiha. That to show how despicable, how insignificant, disgraceful and degraded this dunya is, in the eyes of Allah, that Allah made this dunya a place where he can be disobeyed. And let's go in the rest of the universe. The farishtas are in sujood, they in ruku, they in dhikr, they in tasbih. In jannat, one error, and they were removed because it's not a place of disobedience. So transgression, misdeeds, evil, corruption, sin, is rife on this earth, that shows how despicable dunya is. And this dunya is so deceiving that you will only benefit from it when you leave it, when you abandon it. How unfaithful can this dunya be? A person has wealth. The day he parts with that wealth, that money, well, you see the benefits. Somebody has gold coins, gold bars. It's not going to benefit you. The day you decide, I want to give it away, you're going to buy something. When you give it away, when you transact, then only dunya benefits you. So, so unfaithful. The Father Shaiv says, أَفْنَ الْقُرُونَ الَّتِي كَانَتْ مُنْعِمَةً That the previous eras and the previous people they were annihilated and destroyed. They were wiped out no matter what bounties and pleasures they enjoyed. The nights and days passed in front of them and that ate them up. It eliminated them. It consumed them. Because every day passing is a day closer to the Qabr. Imam Shafi'i Abdullah you say in a poem Ya man yu'aniqu dunya la baqa'a laha yumsi wa yusbihu fi dunya hu saffara halla tarakta min ad-dunya mu'aniqatan hatta tu'aniqa fi al-firdaus abkaran in kunta tabghi jinan al-khuldi taskunuha fayanbaghi laka alla ta'amana al-nara that oh that one who is Embrace dunya. Remember, dunya will not remain forever. So that hug, that embrace will terminate. You spend your morning and nights like a musafir, a traveler, striving for dunya. Look at the morning, look at the afternoons, look at the evenings. There's haircut and movement on earth for dunya. When will you leave? embracing dunya in this deception. Abandon the embrace for dunya so that you can embrace the virgin hoors of Jannatul Firdaus. So you got it wrong my friend. He's saying you embracing the wrong bride. In kunta tabghi jinan al khulli taskunuha. If only you are seeker and desirous, if only you are avarice for Jannah and Akhirat then you would have not been contented with Jahannam. The fact that you live in your life like this indicates that you are comforted and contented with Jahannam. Otherwise you would have not loved a life like this, a life of deception, a life of 
compromising the Maumir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person has this mass, then it's every man for himself. Because it's your mask and what you need to show everybody else and what you want everybody else to see. He said there was a, a couple and the husband addressed his wife, what should you like for your anniversary, my darling wife? So the wife didn't reply. He said, how about a new wardrobe full of designer labels? So I said, no, I don't think so. He said, what about a brand new Mercedes Benz? He said, I don't think so. What about a holiday in Bali? I don't think so. Actually, you know what? The only thing I want from you, my beloved husband, is a divorce. Is a divorce? So the husband said, a divorce? Sorry, darling. I wasn't planning to spend that much. Sorry, darling. I wasn't planning to spend that much. Every man for himself the dunya of Doka and the mass. You see, the invisible man married an invisible woman. And the kids were nothing to look at. Different masks for different people. Sometimes these masks are cover up. And we live a double life. It's just a front for different people in different situations. Just a front. You see, a man was drowning in sorrow, grief and stressed and depressed when his friend met him. He asked, what's wrong? He said, I had it all. I was set. I had the money. I had the beautiful house. I had the fast cars. And I had the love of a supermodel, a beauty, a damsel. And then suddenly it all was gone. So the friend asked, what happened? What happened? He said, my wife found out, my wife found out, that's when it all ended. So a double life, outwardly it seems like you got it under control. Worst case, when a person goes to cover, they'll realize how much out of control it was. So this mask cause a complete breakdown in the Hifadat and the protection and the ni'mat and the bounties and the promises in deen. It's minan, contentment. The love in, the, in the breakdown of love and muhabbad, the breakdown. People, even now marriages have become for the sake of just surviving, just loving. There's no relationship, there's no love, there's no affection. Somebody said, do you know what it means when you come home to a little affection, a little tenderness, a little love and sympathy. So that person replied, you're in the wrong house. You just entered the wrong house. Marriage is a wonderful invention, but then again, it is a bicycle puncture repair kit. So it's just for formality now, the husband and wife are together. Eventually the sincere become insincere. You start labeling everybody around you, even the closest people, you start blacklisting them, branding them, whereas those people that are closest to you, you should show them the most love and affection. You say a wife became annoyed that her husband always came late from work. Every night he said, I'll be on time for dinner. But he was, he had a shop, a business, so he was late. So one day she threw the food out and she got mad and she said, tonight if you're not home at six o'clock, it'll be the last meal I ever cook for you. So the husband became very worried. The husband was perturbed. He loved his wife. But he knew that he had to work. It was a business. He needed to put overtime. Times were tough. So that day he said, I need to make a change. He closed the shop one hour earlier, got onto the bus. Before he got to the bus station, as he was crossing, a car struck him. It was an accident. So immediately he was rushed to hospital. He didn't have serious injuries, but minor injuries, and he was discharged. So he reached home 8 o'clock. So his wife was very upset and raging, and he said, she said, why, why, why did you, how can you come so late? She was upset. You promised to be at home by 6. So he said, darling, I can explain. I know I'm two hours late, but this is what happened. I was run over by a car, I was hospitalized. So the wife said, 
it takes two hours to get run over by a car. Does it take two hours to run, be run over by a car? So we need to check ourselves. We need to remove the fake masks and come to the mass of Allah and His Rasul. The amal for today is to control the tongue. A sahabi asked Nabi alayhi salam, akhbirni bi amrin a'tasimu bihi. Tell me an amal I should hold steadfast onto. He told him that, hold on to your tongue wa ashara ila lisanihi. And Nabi alayhi salam pointed to the tongue. Wa akhiru da'wana. And Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.